Welcome back, dear viewers, to the RPG Imaginarium, where here we seek and catalog the best traditional gaming stories the internet has to offer. Tonight we bring you the story of Osmar, the broliest of paladins, as suggested to us by Carlo Galbiati, our first story suggestion, so congratulations and thanks. This story was spread across two separate threads by an anonymous user on 4chan, only identifying themselves as the cleric, Osmar's chronicler who played in the same game. As always, a link to the original story will be posted below. Our group once had the broliest paladin barbarian ever. His name was Osmar, the half orc paladin of, insert homebrew god of fair fighting here. Osmar's background was that he was a member of a barbarian tribe that had been given as a baby, as a gift to a missionary by his tribe, as a sign of peace between their tribes. To go marry to one of the leader's daughters, since the church leader had no daughters, he made him a son of the cloth, so to speak. Now Osmar wasn't that bright, but he was as strong as a team of oxen. He used a two-handed club bigger than most men, and could, given time and effort, find evil simply by watching the entire world. Picking up the man he detected as evil, and then bellowing at him without stopping for hours on end until the guy broke down. He was utterly patient and unstoppable by any normal means, beyond totally bodily dismemberment in his pursuit of justice. His class was basically the GM choosing to ignore alignment request. So, he was a paladin with levels in a homebrew paladin barbarian prestige class, which broke down to rage against the dying of light. The other PCs included a chaotic evil blackguard girl, a true neutral druid, a neutral evil assassin who had a huge daddy issues, and a lawful evil monk of the god of tyrants. We met when they were sent to hunt us down and stop me from preaching the word. Osmar beat each of them unconscious and, for some reason, got into his head that, since they were still alive after he'd beaten them, our god wanted them alive and changed their ways. Over the course of the game, he slowly, through sheer stubborn-ass will, turned them up the alignment spectrum. The monk became lawful good and dropped his god for ours. The assassin took a few levels in ranger and saw Osmar as the father he never had, if his dad had been six foot eight and green. The druid remained the same but stopped working for assholes. The blackguard, though, she was the most entertaining to watch. You see, her player wasn't an ass, but he was a power gamer and he took flaws he never thought would come into it. One day early on, we come across her home village. Osmar leading the procession in chains and keeping an eye on the criminal scum to avoid any incidents. We go to the inn and buy a room. The innkeeper takes one look at the blackguard, blanches and leaves in a hurry, telling us to take the room for free. Ten minutes later, there's a mob outside. Now, this was in a game with mostly true neutral and evil fucks. Only he and I were actually good. I was a chaotic good cleric, rogue, ex-gang member turned to God who spent most of his time boozing and whoring, but who had been assigned to Osmar to keep him out of trouble. Apparently, the blackguard has a really angsty background involving her brother being a dick to her, and etc, etc. Needless to say, when she left, she left a mark on several people in the village including the mayor's son, who was a prick and one of the main reasons she was a self-serving black-hearted bitch. Osmar goes outside to see what the fuss is. They demand her head. Osmar takes one look at the crowd and says, No, she is mine and I will teach her to be good. The crowd is incredulous and demands proof. Osmar carries her outside over his shoulder. Osmar puts her down next to him and in front of the crowd takes off her chains and says, Say you're sorry for what you did. You hurt a lot of innocent people, apparently. I couldn't care less how many innocent people were hurt crack as he backhands her across the stage, then walks over and picks her up on my shoulders, looks her straight in the eye and yells, SAY YOU'RE SORRY FOR HURTING THE INNOCENT! Osmar has a very high intimidate. Osmar rolls a 19. Osmar is a fucking scary half-orc sometimes. She bends in the face of his righteous fury for just a second. I'm sorry, but... but what he did to me... what who did? The mayor's son... Osmar turns towards the crowd and uses Detect Evil. Three people turn up, the mayor, his son, and the head of the guard. Turns out the plot hook for this was the mayor was meant to hire us to go hunt down some ex-convicts, who were actually people who had smacked his son about for screwing with their girlfriends after drugging them and so forth. And that the black guard had the masochist disadvantage. She failed a will save and became obsessed with Osmar and his backhand of justice. And Osmar was one of the first people to actually listen to her when she said things like the mayor's son is a prick. So the obsession, the player decided, being a god tier role player with no sense of shame when it came to in character, was going to fall in love with Osmar, 
which Osmar didn't notice until about 15 sessions later when she confessed. Osmar's reaction. He sat there for a while, looked at the now true neutral ex-Blackguard and said simply, If you learn to behave and be good, and you ask nicely, I might spank you. Then nodded and continue on his way. By the end of the game, she was a paladin of that SNM god, and in the final encounter, when she was offered a place at the big bad evil guy's side if she turned down her back on the party, she didn't because of Osmar and his sexy half-orc love. Osmar fucking rocked. Anyone want to hear about his confrontation with a lawful evil tyrant who challenged him to a honorable duel? Well, the big bad evil guy for the game was a lawful evil king turned tyrant, being backed up by the god of tyrants a long forgotten god, which basically meant that he wasn't worshipped actively, but anyone who was a tyrant counted as a worshipper of his, despite worshipping other gods. So he got auto-cleric levels. The game was all about Osmar and I going to this new, unknown country to try and spread the word of our religion at the start, until we realized their king was a dickhead of the greatest magnitude. At which point Osmar got disgruntled by the evil on the air around him and decided that he was going to turn this country around. And the rest of us were along for the riot on the righteous tidal wave that was Osmar. After many epic adventures, the game continues to a climax with a revolt led by Osmar, me, and the ranger assassin in the capital city. Which pretty much failed, we were struck behind a barricade, with the king's men raining hell down on us for days on end. Us getting almost as good as we get, but there's too many of them. You know how it works. When Osmar sees the king watching from the sidelines, and bellows a challenge for leadership of the country at him, one of the king's laws was that you could challenge anyone for anything. Might makes right. And now his entire army hears this challenge, and obviously they know he can't back down from it. So the king says, sure, whatever. Get my fucking huge sword and armor and let's do this. Then your entire revolt is mine and it's off to the ball twisting implements with all of you. Even the women. A circle is drawn on neutral ground. The two parties meet with the ex-Blackguard as Osmar's second, and the king's general as his second. Now the thing about this king and his relationship with the god is, he was the last tyrant alive at this time. And if there are no worshippers of a forgotten god, they're gone for good and a new one will appear when and as they are needed. And Osmar is a fucking good fighter, so this god is shitting enough bricks to build New York. He tells the king to cheat, takes over him and puts on a few poisoned rings. When he shakes Osmar's hand, shrink, minus ten to strength and con, as well as being blinded and a few other mixed nasties in the form of liquid curses. Osmar's greatest ability is down the drain. Before Osmar can call out this treachery, the king smacks him in the gob with his pommel and the fight begins. Osmar does his best, but needless to say he's getting fucked up bad. When the god king makes the mistake all tyrants make, he starts gloating going on about how the weak are pathetic and don't deserve protection, about how men are wolves and he is the biggest motherfucking alpha wolf there is, about how good is stupid, honor is restraint and respect for others is pathetic. Osmar is annoyed at the puny man dissing on his principles. Osmar pulls a trick we've not seen in months of leveling because he's never needed it. Osmar's righteous rages. Feats kick in, results are rolled, tables are brought out. Osmar is healed, back on full health, basically sweats the poison out and gives out a bellow that sends half the king's men running away with liquid fear running down the inside of their legs. A man possessed by a god itself stumbles at this bellow, this roar of anger against the sheer injustice of the world and the fury against the darkness he and the man he possessed represent. That malicious evil that thinks it can get away with things because good men won't fight back or aren't smart enough to fight them. And then Osmar brings up his weapon and stands over the fallen king for a moment before saying five words. Get up and face me. He waits until his opponent stands and then swings his club into him, breaking his entire shield arm in one hit as he tries to protect himself. The king screams out to his troops to fire on the battlefield. They do so. Osmar asks the GM if he can roll divine intervention. He fails but uses a once a day item to re-roll twice and passes. The arrow and bolt stop in midair. The general tries to enter the arena and is boiled in his armor by the fire of the lion that surrounds them, effectively disintegrating him in his suit as the god of fair battle himself looks down on this betrayal of his greatest warrior and goes, No, this shall be a fair battle. Osmar brings his weapon in again and drives the crowned helmet so deep into the man's head that it can never be removed from the body of the armor again, then stands bellowing in the circle. 
The god of tyrants tries to escape taking no physical form, but Osmar grapples it using smite evil, literally holding a dying god down into the dueling ring, using nothing but the force of his own righteousness and hatred of evil, until it stops spasming and finally disperses away. Osmar was now king. Osmar took the crown that his new generals offered him, and looked at it, and then nodded, and said, I'm not smart enough to be king. Osmar gave this away to the church, creating a council of twelve members, six clergymen and six randomly chosen peasants who each served for a maximum time, and he went back to the road. When asked why, why turn down this great offer, this chance to be a king, and have everything he wants, he answered, because I do not need it. I have all I wish here. It is my place to fight evil, face to face, not as a figurehead. I have evil before me, my weapon at my side, good and just friends to battle alongside, and the war eternal to battle in the name of my god. What more could make me happy? Osmar then drags on with us all being dragged along in his wake. What happens next? I don't know, we're continuing this campaign in a few weeks after the GM has had a chance to rest and plan. Thank you all once again for tuning into another RPG Imaginarium. This is a longer one, so we'll be splitting the video into two parts. We're glad you enjoy these videos and stories. If you enjoyed this video and want more like it, how about giving us a like and subscribing to our channel? We're always glad to hear your feedback, and if you have a story you'd like us to read, like this one for example, go ahead and send us a link, whether it's your story or post it somewhere else. And of course, we'll credit you on the original poster. We also have that all newfangled social media you can follow us on, and if you'd like to support us financially, how about you check out our resident GM Chaz's books on Amazon Kindle. A special thanks to 4chan's TG board and Reddit, and their associated archives and subreddits for providing such great stories. Thanks again, and stay caffeinated.